Hi, Natalie. It's Ashley. Um, I want to thank you so much for going through all the word lists and recording those and sending those to me. They were very, very helpful. And I just want to, again, tell you, you are doing amazing. So um, if you ever decide you want to go into speech pathology, you've got a job. I mean, the prompting and the way that you were helping him um, really was just exactly what I would want from a parent. So thank you very much. Um, some of the things that I heard are things that I'm sure that you observed as well. Um, the first thing I really want to focus on is um, trying to get more of those final sounds. And so one of the first word lists that had CVC, um, that just stands for consonant, vowel, consonant. Um, he you probably heard him drop that final sound. So for example, in map and mop and beam, um, he did not produce those final M's and P's. And so one way that I work on this a lot with kids is by moving our bodies around a little bit. Um, it gets more areas of the brain activated, it's more fun, and it really does help them kind of in a way visually see or feel that final sound. And so to do this, um, I usually just start with the basic claps. So I have my hands up and I'll say, map, and I'll just kind of tap the tops of my legs, uh, maybe the table or something like that. We can clap, map, and really just any time that we can just really move our body around and really put add that stress to that final sound is helpful. Um, for kids who are super wiggly, um, we can do this by jumping on targets and producing a final sound. So we'll go, map, then jump and get that, that P sound. You will hear a little bit of a space between the first part of the word and the second part, that final sound, and that's okay. Um, we can kind of squish those together a little bit later down the road once we are consistently hearing that a sound does go there. Um, you may hear him use the first consonant um, as a substitution. So he may say ma -m, um, or he might say um, pap instead of mop. Some of those, that's okay. Um, there, what he's doing is simplifying it by borrowing um, another consonant sound that's close by. And so um, just try to work on that a little bit. Again, you know, the, the arms up, mop is usually the best way to do it. Um, squishing Play-Doh on the table is also a really fun way to do it. Um, just any way to kind of move around and add that stress to that final sound. So try that. And then um, this, the other word list, he was able to just fly through the one that said CVCV, which is good, the ba ba, boo boo, mama. So those are the same vowels and the same consonants. Um, that's great. Super happy to see that. The next step that's a little more difficult is whenever we change the two vowels. And that's when you saw um, or probably heard him dropping the middle consonant. Um, so, for example, in baby, he, he dropped that middle B, bubble, mommy, people, t potato, which is actually just like you did, tato is how we're saying that. Um, so that's the next word list that I really like to focus on. So again, for this one, our consonants are the same, okay? So we're keeping that part easy for him. But now we're trying to make him say both of those consonants while also um, coordinating the tongue for the two different vowel sounds. And so it's just minor little changes, but it really can be very difficult for some kids. And so to do that, um, we actually do more changes just with our pitch and inflection and stress and with our voice. And so for that one, um, let's do like if we did puppy, it would be puppy. And I would move my body around and I would um, add that stress and maybe change my pitch really high. Um, sometimes kids like to go low too. So you go tay toe stretching each of those syllables out, do the first half of the word, and then do something different for the other half of the word. Um, that is a really great way to um, help them start hearing that, that middle sound. Um, keep working on that one. You can move your body around a little bit if you wanted to try jumping or moving or clapping. Um, I find that less effective and just moving your body up and down like that and doing more with your voice for this set. Um, that's usually a little bit more helpful. Um, the other word list that you guys practiced um, was whenever you were changing both consonants and both vowels. That one, um, I think that one's just a little bit too difficult for right now. And um, so I would suggest for you to be familiar with what those some of those words are so you can be listening for those. Um, if I were to have him in therapy, I would focus mainly on those the consonant vowel consonant so that working the final sound and then working on the two different vowels primarily. And 
and then maybe literally just throw in like three or four of this other more difficult word list where there's two consonants and two vowels. Um, just to kind of be listening, you know, is he making progress towards those? But until we can do the other word lists, um, they're probably going to be pretty difficult for him. Um, so continue working on that. Um, I'm here for any questions, problem solving. Um, you know, sometimes there's certain sounds or certain, you know, vowels that might be a little bit more difficult. You can always take note of that and we can talk about those things. Um, I'll probably have you do the word list maybe one more time before progress monitoring just so we can get some real good hard data. Um, but really just pick like you could do 10 words a day and that really will make a big difference. A lot of our research tells us that if we just do shorter time, t shorter intervals, but more um, times a week, that's actually what's best. And so um, even just working on it for 10 minutes and then you are totally done, buddy. You know, you're, that's it for the day. And then working on it again the next day, that's a really great way of practicing um, these speech goals. So um, the other thing, I think that was it. If he does, um, he didn't really miss the beginning sounds of any of the words. So that was a really, really great thing that I heard. Um, occasionally he used an H for some of them, which is good. So that means he's, he knows that a sound goes in there. Um, he just didn't use the right consonant. So, um, just keep working on it and let me know what questions you have. Thank you.